Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to build an image gallery app for MIT App Inventor 2. You'll gain practice with using images as well as more experience using App Inventor's various features. This video was created as the solution to a coding challenge for Technovation. The way this works is that I can click on the different buttons to bring up different images. So if I click on image 1, that will bring up a kitten. Image 2 brings up a piglet, and then image 3 is a puppy. And I can switch back and forth between the three. So I'm going to start off by opening a new project here, and I've called it Image Gallery. To organize those buttons nicely, um, I need what's called a horizontal layout, which allows me to stack different components. That's here under Layout. And then horizontal means I can arrange the buttons from left to right. If we wanted to put them vertically, we could do a vertical arrangement instead. So I'll drag this onto the screen. And now we are going to put buttons inside of there and we'll be able to stack them nicely. So to get the button, I'm going to go under user interface and then drag three of these on. And just put it into the horizontal arrangement. This little blue bar should appear indicating that it will go inside. And we can confirm that by looking over here and we see that button one is nested under the horizontal arrangement. And then I can drag another one. This is a little tricky now because we have to make sure that it goes right next to the other one. And then it will pop right into the horizontal arrangement. Again, that goes under there. And then I'll get a third one because I plan to have three images. Now I want to change the text on these buttons so that it says something other than text for button one. Um, so I'm going to click on one of these and then I'll be able to change its properties over here. And I'm going to scroll down to where it says text and it currently says text for button one and that corresponds with what's displayed on the button. So I'm going to change that to say image one. And then similarly for button two to get its properties to come up I can either click on it here or I can click at it on the screen. And then under here I'm going to change this to image two. And then similarly for button three. All right, so below these, we want the image to actually appear. For that component, we can go under user interface and drag image on. For now, we don't actually want to change anything about this because when we first open the app, we don't want any image to appear there. The image only appears when the user clicks on one of the buttons. So for now, we're not going to change anything here. The picture is none, meaning there's no picture initially. But then how are we going to get these images? Well, we want to somehow convey to App Inventor which are the images that we're going to want to use eventually. And then within the blocks, which is kind of the coding component of this, we're in designer right now, in blocks, we'll be able to cause the image to take on one of the pictures that we've uploaded in response to the user clicking on one of the buttons. But for now, we have to get those images loaded into App Inventor. Um, so for this, you can choose any three images you happen to have on your computer. I'll also put the links to three cute images of baby animals that I'll be using if you want to use those. So go ahead and click on Upload File here under Media, and then click Choose File. This will bring up your directory. Um, and I just have this folder with my images, so I'm going to click on each in turn. You can't do multiple ones at the same time, so I'm just going to click on Kitten, and then open that here. So that's appeared here, and then I can click OK. It says it's uploading it to the App Inventor server. Depending on how big your image is, that will take a different amount of time. And then now it's here. So I have this image loaded into App Inventor that I can then use when I want to. I'm going to do the same thing for my other two images. So choose file, and then get a piglet. And that's going to upload. And then I'll get the third one. That's all we need to do with designer. So let's go to blocks. I'm going to click on blocks in the upper right hand corner. You can see that we can toggle back and forth between these, but we'll stick with blocks for now. So this is where the code comes in. And that's going to be pretty straightforward here. All we need to do is to say that when the user clicks on a certain button, we want to bring up the corresponding image. So because this is going to deal with an event that relates to buttons, you could probably look under the buttons here to find those. And you could just click on button one. And then the first one is what we want. It says one button one dot click do. And that allows us to trigger a certain action in response to the user clicking on the button. So we can drag that down. And what do we want to have happen when the user clicks on the button? Well, we just want to bring up that image. And so we can go and click on this image one because it relates to that image that was initially empty that we put on our screen. And we're going to choose the one that says set image one dot picture two. So this is where those media components that we added are going to come into play. You can drag this here. It's asking which picture are we putting inside of this image. 
So here we just want to put a text object that has the file name of the image. If you weren't sure what your file names were, you can look down here and they should be listed. Um, note that the extension is important. So you wouldn't just put kitten, you need to put kitten.jpg. Um, this is again going to be a text object, so just go to text and get the empty quotes and drag that here. And you can now put text in there. So I'll make this kitten.jpg. And then we just need to do the same thing for the other two buttons. You can go through the process of clicking on these again, um, or you can also just copy and paste this block either by right clicking and doing duplicate, or you can do Command C or Control C depending on Mac or Windows, um, and then Command C or Command V and that will paste another one. It's giving a red X right now because these are all referring to button one, which makes it confused because it doesn't know when the user clicks on button one which of these paths to follow. But we can fix this by just changing this one to button two and this one to button three, so now those errors go away. Um, and then we can now change this file name. So this is going to say when we click on button 2, we want that same image to now have the piglet. And then when we click on button 3, we want it to have the puppy. Great, and that's all we have to do. So now to test it out, you just need to go under connect up here and then click on AI companion. You should have already downloaded the corresponding app on an Android device. And if you click on that, that will bring up a QR code that you can scan or a code that you could type in manually. It may take a little longer to load this to the phone just because that images are involved which have larger file sizes, um, but you should be able to see a progress bar and it will eventually appear on the device. If you want to keep this permanently on your phone, you can also go to build and then you can click on this one here that will generate a QR code um, that then will permanently download the app to your phone. Um, rather than temporarily within the AI Companion app. So congratulations on building your app. Um, I encourage you to continue to play around with this and see what else you can change, whether that's adding more images or have the buttons trigger additional events when the user clicks on them.